I'm a PGY4 second year research resident at UC San Diego. Um, thank you to Sieges and the moderators for allowing us to share our work today on distinguishing characteristics of xanthrogranulomatous cholecystitis, to which I will continue to refer to that as XGC, and gallbladder ad adenocarcinoma, which is persistently a dilemma. Um, since I am the last talk of one of the last sessions of the last day here at Sages, I will keep this here for the full seven recommended seconds. Just kidding. Thank you. Uh, the first senior author and myself have no disclosures. Um, XGC is a rare variant of chronic cholecystitis, which can resemble gallbladder adenocarcinoma, particularly on preoperative imaging. Our CT scans as shown here. Uh, both of these images are a patient of ours with XGC, causing the dilemma of is this cancer and should we prepare for it or is it cholecystitis? Um, XGC is initially misdiagnosed as a carcinoma in up to 25% of cases in overtreatment in the form of open surgery and hepatic resection for what is a benign condition, ultimately. We examined our experience at our institution in UCSD with XGC and GIC to identify distinguishing characteristics that may guide patient counseling and surgical management at the time of surgery. Our objective was to determine demographics, clinical, biochemical, radiologic, or even intraoperative features that favor benign or malignant pathology of the gallbladder. So we did a retrospective review of all pathologically confirmed cases of XGC and GIC following cholecystectomy at UCSD in the time period displayed here and looked at those features that I mentioned and compared the two groups. Statistical analysis was conducted um, for categorical variables. Out of over just over 1,600 cholecystectomies during that time, we had 37 confirmed cases of XGC and 20 confirmed cases of GAC. Patients with GAC were older, mean of 70 years, and exclusively female, 100% um, versus almost half. The primary presenting symptom was abdominal pain for both uh, pathologies, and there were no significant differences between accompanying symptoms such as fever, nausea, jaundice. The mean maximum white blood cell count was elevated for XGC compared to GAC, and that was statistically significant. So we did a comparison of radiographic characteristics with our um, radiology colleagues and found that for XGC, we're seeing presence of gallstones more significantly and wall thickening more significantly, though this was present in both cases, you can see here. And for GAC or adenocarcinoma, we did see a presence of intraluminal mass more often and surrounding lymphadenopathy. So there are a couple things pointing here and there. However, both are displaying both of these things. So we have clinical features that may favor benign chronic, chronic cholecystitis over gallbladder adenocarcinoma, including younger age, male gender, current or prior leukocytosis, and the absence of a math or lymphadenopathy. Either way, lap coli is safe, surgical option for equivocal presentations. Um, and you can consider using intraoperative frozen section if your institution allows for it or intentional staging of more extensive procedures based upon final histopathology. Thank you, and I'll take any questions. And thanks for sticking around. <laughs>